Here at CHESS 2015, Thomas Baldrick joined now by Dr. Terry Trow, Director of the Pulmonary Vascular Disease Program and Associate Professor of Medicine at the Yale School of Medicine. Thank you, sir, for spending a few moments with us. Sure, pleased to do so. All right, so you're busy at this conference already. You've um, you lectured a session on non-pharmacologic management of PAH. What exactly was this theme about? Right. Well, as you know, we've come a long way with drug therapies to help our patients with this dreaded disease, and I'm, it's, it's clearly improving their exercise tolerance and functional status. But as a physician who diagnoses and treats these patients, we all realize that's just the beginning of the things they're going to need from you to, to kind of uh, navigate this chronic illness. And so it's very important, for example, to make sure that they understand uh, how to avoid upper respiratory infections since they're going to tolerate those much less uh, well than other patients. Things like using uh, Purell frequently and having visitors use Purell or, or alcohol-based soaps frequently to, to limit uh, germ exposure. Uh, using disinfectant wipes and remotes, TV remotes, doorknobs, that kind of thing can be very important in avoiding upper, upper respiratory infections. And also uh, to em emphasize the importance of getting a flu shot every year and a pneumococcal vaccine every five years. In addition to things like that, we also try to make sure they're ready for emergency room visits. Uh, many physicians in an average community hospital will not be very familiar with pulmonary arterial hypertension diagnosis and certainly not familiar with infused parenteral prostanoid therapies and the pumps that our patients have to use. So there's actually good tools uh, available, for example, on the Pulmonary Hypertension Association website uh, for a, a, a powering toolkit that they can use to have all their information in one place, uh, even sometimes on a, a USB report that, that uh, first responders can refer to to know all about their past medical history their pumps, their dose rates, the, the, the contact numbers for their physicians and specialty pharmacies. It's also important to help them with travel. Many of them want to travel and feel like they're kind of restricted in what they can do with travel because of their uh, uh, disease. But you know, even with prostate therapies, with proper planning, they can travel safely and we encourage them to do so because it gives them, empowers them certainly. Uh, and what kind of things we do, ask them to do, we ask them to uh, have all their medications uh, very well organized and bring extra medications in case they're delayed. A lot of times they won't bring extra medicines, they'll be stuck there for a, a week without their medication, which is a dangerous proposal. If it's improved, uh, infused or pro a parental prostate therapy, we ask that they talk to their specialty pharmacy about shipping many of those supplies ahead to their destination so they're waiting and ready, and always to bring a backup pump in case they have a pump malfunction, always to have the 24-hour hotline number with them so they can call and get help if they're having any issues with their parental uh, infusion. Uh, we also teach them things like avoiding pregnancy. Uh, you know, pulmonary hypertension patients that get pregnant can certainly have uh, untoward outcomes and it's important that the young women of child producing years uh, understand that and, and use uh, usually two recommended birth control methods at least one of them being a barrier method. That's a very difficult subject. It is and it's a very emotional uh, turnstone for, mm -hmm. for many of our young ladies that have this diagnosis but it's important they understand that anywhere from 15 to 25 percent mortality rates occur with, uh, for women who deliver ch uh, child a full term and that the children themselves have increased mortality as well as in, uh, reduced intrauterine growth rates. Uh, and so there, it's not a trivial thing. And we, uh, although it's a difficult emotional thing, we try to make sure they at least understand the facts. And should they decide to go ahead and get pregnant despite our advice not to do so, right. it's important they be managed in a pH center with a real coordinated group of caregivers, a cardiac anesthesiologist who knows what he's doing, uh, pH experts, OB, uh, specialized obstetrics, gynecology experts. So uh, that's really important. We've had been successfully uh, delivered two patients this year in our center who insisted on having children, but it's, it's not, the, not the advised way to go. Mm -hmm. um, and in, indeed, uh, we of, often counsel our patients about things like unnecessary surgeries. You know, it's a very um, common for even uh, for physicians in the community, surgeons or gastroenterologists who do procedures to not realize the risk of doing so in a patient with a significant pulmonary hypertension. And indeed, in patients that have uh, pulmonary pressures that are two-thirds or higher than their systemic blood pressures, the risks are particularly pronounced for right ventricular failure, right ventricular ischemia, and even death. So it's very important that unnecessary procedures, uh, elective procedures, be avoided. Now, there's a lot of doctors that don't see PAH very much. And the things you're talking about, it seems like there's so many things that they have to make sure they don't overlook. What kind of advice do you give for how to make sure you don't overlook these things? Well, you know, it's always helpful to have a checklist. And in fact, in our center, we do sort of have a checklist of all, not only the testing they should get uh, when they're initially diagnosed, but also of the ancillary things that are, are going to uh, come up as questions. Uh, and uh, we, I'm fortunate to have a very excellent clinical coordinator, a nurse, who helps with that checklist. And oftentimes, those kind of issues are sometimes addressed by her in a separate session. After I've done my nitty-gritty of assessing medication response, assessing whether we have to change doses or what have, what have you, then she can take that patient aside and go through some of these things. 
each visit a little a little more because of course they get overwhelmed but each each visit a little bit more with particulars about things like airline travel oxygen uh, very important to do nocturnal oximetry studies to check to see if they need oxygen at night when they're sleeping certainly oxygen assessments for flight we do uh, simula uh, simulation studies for altitude and so we, we advise them of all these things if you're going to travel let us know well in advance we'll help you get ready make sure you have an ER readiness kit ready uh, ready to bring with you to the emergency room should you have a problem and have to go to a local emergency room in the session you did here at CHEST, is there a key takeaway that you have from it? Maybe a, a prevalent theme that came up, something that surprised you? Well, I think just the, no, just the notion that these things that may not seem that important compared to the, the advances we made in drug therapy are really important and that you, they really have to emphasize them and help the patients. So they're, they're, they're going to be, they're questioning it a lot. But the other thing that's really important, and I know you uh, spoke with Ray Foley about this earlier, my colleague, is isolation and depression and helping them with that. And there are lots of ways in the current era we can help them uh, not feel so isolated. Things like using technology, you know, FaceTime, Skyping, uh, Instagram, uh, that's the kind of way of interacting with words with friends, games they can do without actually having to leave their, their home. Uh, using, taking advantage of things like Peapod grocery delivery or Meals on Wheels to kind of decrease the stress level they feel. Feel like they're not alone. That's right. Thank you very much for your time. Come back and see us again anytime. Great, we will do. Thanks. You bet.